Yes, we do. Got it. It's another episode of Binary Jazz. Uh, really? We're here. We're back. We have a show in your ear, you. ear holes. Uh, yeah, I missed, missed all of you guys. It's been a while. Uh, we do this thing. It's a, it's a podcast. It's on the internet. Uh, uh, and it's, it's just three people that, that are hanging out. And sometimes Allison gives us topics and Gary and I try to bullshit our way through explaining what those things are without knowing what they are. But today we don't have a topic and that's okay. Cause it's been a while. <clears throat> that's what we always do. Bullshit our way through it. Yeah, bullshit our way through it for gotten us this far. Roughly forty-ish minutes. Yep. Forty years. The the length of a Zoom call. (laughs) Although I did just have a conversation with one of my children about um, uh, one of the organizations we're involved in is looking for a secretary, Uh, and I'm like, this is a good opportunity for you to learn a good life skill. Like, if you can be that person in a meeting that can take good notes and share them with the team afterwards. Like it's it's gonna get you places. So he's like, I don't know. I'm like, I literally do it constantly at work. Even if I'm not like secretary, I'll take notes. Just nobody ever needs to see them, but they exist. And then at some point, once upon a time in the future, um, someone will be like, Hey, what did we decide about blah blah blah? Like, oh, I have that right here. Ta da! I don't take great also, notes. I don't either, but you know I'd what? Like to. Take not taking great notes like consistently, consistent. Nope, I don't speak very well. So this uh, this point is already ruined. I say not doing something badly over and over, you incrementally get better at it. But I've been speaking for a long time, and it's not. Yeah, it's not getting much not, better for me. That's that's fair. It's not working out. <laughs> I've plateaued with my speaking ability. This is it. This is the best you get. Uh, well, when this episode will go out. Uh, it will be the week. It will it will give you enough time to register mm. for uh word sesh, mm. which has a uh talk that I am uh presenting at. <laughs> yes, I just realized that I made a message in the Pantheon community. Uh slack and said that it was starting today which is incorrect because starts, you're not there <laughs> it starts right next week is this is this in person no okay it is virtual i have i have forgotten that some events are in person and then i see people who are like it was really good to see you and i'm like wait what no don't do that don't do that <laughs> yeah yeah, well, uh, DrupalCon just happened, and that was in person. And a lot of that was the one I was thinking of, of. A lot of Pantheon folks uh, went to that. Yeah. yeah. Um, but WordCess is not. Uh, it's WordPress specific. It's in three different time zones. So there's an APAC uh, day, and there's a um, EMEA day, and there's a America's day, and then there's um, like workshop day. Those are all acronyms for. Yes. Yes. Reading. Sorry. APAC is uh, <laughs> Asia and Pacific folks. Islands. The sea is silent. Uh, and <laughs> and EMEA is Europe, uh, Middle East, and Africa. <laughs> I, it's funny. I've heard all these acronyms before, and someone has explained to me, and I'm like, they say APAC, and I'm like, mentally, like, I Asia associate, Pacific. Like, Asia Pacific is APAC. Yeah, that's what. Well, they—I don't know—they gave me that much, but they're like APAC, and it's like this region, and I'm like, oh, I could see that being called APAC, and I never really thought any further that that probably had to stand for something. And then in the, the same thing, I'm like, yeah, in my here's, head, like, here's I could, an acronym, and you just you just blindly accept it without yeah. understanding where the acronym comes from. I mean, that's part of that bullshitting for forty years. Yep. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. fair. HTML. No, I'm just kidding. Hypertext yeah. markup link. Yeah. Okay. What was Anywho, the great, uh, um, you can register and you can recently. you can watch HTML me talk about for... nerdy things. Sorry, is it free? I can't yeah, remember. it's free. It's free to to do whatever. And I all all the sessions will be recorded. So if you're not in one of the you know three oh, regions, cool. uh, I think the week following. Um, I mean, 
the sessions are recorded. The sessions are already recorded. <laughs> oh. We submitted recorded sessions. We're not doing it live. So it just Don't look like, behind the curtain. You're ruining the, the show. So, so, so I wanted to interject and say, <laughs> if you're listening to the show sometime in the distant past or the distant future, there will already be a video you can find. If you're if there, you're wondering why there's objection though to DrupalCon being in person, we're at oh yeah the post very... tail end of the pandemic, but we're the not tail end, because you say it's yeah because it, now we're going the other way and people don't care anymore, so it's right. going to be uh, bad again. Anyway, my sister, one year old nephew had it, have it currently, so yeah. yeah, I'm supposed to be going to Florida next week. Oh, good. I fucking know. I know. <laughs> and, and I don't even know. Like, I don't even, I don't. My parents have guilted me into coming down with the kids. And I'm, I, I will say uh, that. That's some um, strong guilt. I, I will say that almost we no should, one. We should work on that. <laughs> I will say that almost no one uh, yeah. at the airport was yeah. wearing masks. And almost no one on the airplanes were wearing masks besides us. There were a few people, but it was heavily in the minority. Yeah. And uh, I, I I recently flew to another place uh, that should be filling in. Uh, uh, and I, we went to Hawaii to celebrate our 20 year anniversary, my partner and I. Uh, and so um, cool. yeah, we went to Maui. Uh, so almost no one was wearing uh, masks in the airport, uh, on the airplane. Uh, and when we were in Hawaii, almost no one was wearing masks just in general. Um, most of the stuff we were doing was outside anyway. Um, yeah. so it didn't matter so much, but like going to grocery stores and whatever, there wasn't, there was, there was some, I mean, it was very scattershot. When I and then a I, few weeks ago, the only people wearing masks were the people basically on my flight that were required to wear masks because Canada. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I, it was funny because I, I was looking at, I was doing a lot of uh, Google mapping <laughs> to find where to go in, in, in Maui. Uh, and there was an overlay suggested at some point that was like, hey, you might be interested in what this region's COVID uh, rates are or whatever. Like, you know, so it just had an overlay uh, and the overlay <laughs> was all red for the whole island uh, to show that it was like yeah. increasing and bad. And I'm like, cool, cool. That's cool. <laughs> but we came back uh we, we did not get sick while we were there uh we wore masks yeah. on the plane we wore masks in the airport we did not get sick we did not get like the plague that you, you usually get in when traveling in general we did not have that we came home uh we tested yesterday uh because we saw uh aaron's folks and we were did not test positive on the the you know, at home test. So, I mean, all was fine. We did possibly some questionably risky activities like in proximity with other people that were unmasked, but you know, we're, we're okay. You're living life at this yes. point. Well, the Maui swingers are world renowned for what it's worth. I wouldn't miss it either. Also, the more important question there is that you got there safely because your plane travel history, <laughs> at least as far as I've known you, has not been great. Yes. Yeah. The only, so, so if you, if you, dig through my long Twitter history, you will find many occasions where there are Twitter threads uh, depicting my travel uh, experiences. Uh, and many of them have been uh, in some way marred by some uh, circumstances outside of my control. My luggage got lost. The f the plane decided to to swirl around in the circle above the airport for two hours and land, and I missed my connecting flight. I mean, Pilot who knows? There's it, it's a wild, wild past. Uh, the only excitement that happened on this particular flight was our f where plane was delayed like an hour, an hour and a half, maybe. That was it. So we were arrived. What? in Hawaii a little bit later than we expected. Manageable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then we, we left there, we arrived here, there's no problems, we survived, uh, nothing got lost. Yeah. Nice. It wasn't like, the seatbelts don't work. No. Yeah. <laughs> but. <laughs> oh, this is an ejection seat, darn it. <laughs> 
but uh, Hawaii was great. We went to um, or Maui. Uh, I can't. I can't say that I, I can't speak for like all of the Hawaiian islands. I can speak for Maui. I feel like we we got a pretty good sense of of Maui. We pretty much we rented a car, uh, and and over the course of the week we traveled to most corners of Maui. Uh, there's a little bit. There's a little corner uh, of Maui that we didn't hit uh, hit because. Um, we got a map of the island from uh, the rental car agency, and there were two sections that were highlighted in red. One of them was like, your rental agreement may not cover driving in this area. You should you know, be cautious or whatever. And the other section was at the bottom uh, that said, you definitely should not drive here or something. <laughs> like, it, like, do not go here at all. Uh, so um, on uh, one of our first trips, uh, so we went, we were... Um, we were in a tiny little village uh, called Maalea, uh, where there is a harbor, uh, and we were just right next to the harbor. Uh, and there's not really much there besides the harbor and all the stuff that you would do at, you know, up here. Um, so there's a little like shopping area, and there's lots of docks and boats and stuff you can go on tours and stuff. Uh, and then the aquarium is there. And the aquarium is pretty much the the main thing. Um, but we were on the coast and we we're overlooking the water, uh, and you could go. So you can go up around, most of the stuff is up around the west, a lot of stuff is up around the west side, that's where the touristy stuff is. So uh, we drove up along the west side, and if you go sort of al along the top of the island, so Maui is sort of like, kind of like bean shaped, it's got like a, a nub here and a nub here, and then in the middle it's kind of skinny. Um, so we went up around the top side, uh, there's a, a cool blowhole at the top, and then you can keep going and go around this loop and basically end up where you started. Uh, but in between where that blowhole is and where you hit civilization again, basically, uh, is the section that our map said it might not be covered by the rental agreement. Uh, and and I'm like, so many things go through my brain. I'm like, what's there? Yeah, That's right. Like, exactly. I'm like the dying to interrupt shut you off. and be like, can you just get to it? What's there? <laughs> and and so right, yeah, exactly. Well, I'm sure like the car's not going to shut Jurassic off, and then, Park is. <laughs> and they're not going to track us or anything. So I'm like, you know, and there were some windy I don't roads. Know that I would assume that <laughs> there were some windy roads, uh, and we're the thinking opposite. We're we're thinking, uh, or I'm thinking. Well, it's probably just this windy mountainous road that that's probably it. Just you know, it just. It's we've driven on on narrow, windy roads in California off, the, you know, where the the you're right overlooking a, a sheer drop off. Probably it's just that. So we're like, we'll just we'll just do the loop. And so we, we do the loop and we get to this place and it's like, oh, this is why uh, it like. So so first thing is, is, is there's a sign that says uh, the highway ends. And they're like, okay, so that that's that's why it's just at the end of the highway. It's not an official highway, but it's still a paved road. It's that that's the reason. Uh, and then the road starts to narrow, uh, and it's still winding up along you know this mountain, um, this which is a volcano, and uh, and it's still two way travel. Uh, and we're like, okay, so it's because it's it's a little bit narrower here and it's windy. It's a little bit dangerous. Okay, we can. Just... So then the road narrows some more. So it's basically the width or less of a single vehicle winding up this mountainous road. Uh, and there's every once in a while a tiny little pull off, uh, like sort of on the mountainside where you can kind of go off in, sort of into like a little nook so uh, to allow a car to go past you. But like even that is kind of pushing things. Uh, and we're like, and it, it gets really narrow and really sharp. Uh, there's lots of like uh, areas where you can't see around the edge, um, and it's it's uh, so you you know how you're supposed to honk your horn when it's a blind turn. So we're going like honk 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 <laughs> like most of the way through these roads, and then we get to these tiny little villages up in this area that says like thank you for not honking. <laughs> So obviously that's a thing, <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, eventually we get through. But we're driving like maybe 15, 20 miles an hour at most around these like you know narrow winding roads. And so then angry. after that, we decided okay. So that section down there where it basically says do not go there under any circumstances, we should probably just leave that alone. <laughs> I feel like if they were more explicit from the beginning. <laughs> It would just be helpful because just saying no. Just set the expectation. Yeah. Yeah. And like what happens? Like if you wreck the vehicle there, like 
Like I, they're I, like, oh, we my are assumption like it's difficult for them to get out there too. My my yeah, my I assumption my assumption is is like, that if you trespass here. My my assumption is that if that you did get into an accident uh, out out in that section, that basically just they just wouldn't cover it. The, their insurance wouldn't cover, it. and they they made a big deal when we signed the thing that's like, oh, it's up to a million dollars in coverage and whatever. It's like I'm I, I was like, it's just that million dollars in in coverage is just gone. Like it's it's entirely on you because you went into this area that they pointed out mm-hmm. on their map that they gave you. Don't go there, and so so it's just a liability thing, is what I assume. Mm. I I think it's way more nefarious than that. Well, maybe. I think there but... was a long standing agreement between the rental car companies <laughs> and um, the uh, that region that have deemed it unsafe to travel here uh, for rental cars. Sabotage. Yeah. 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 yeah because it, it, because it the fun. volcano demands rental cars. So <laughs> volcano demands. <laughs> The volcano doesn't demand anything. The volcano is is quiet. The volcano is sleeping. Well, that, that's that because volcano. you came the day after the volcano was satiated by another rental car. That that's not. They true. didn't even let that the is, occupants out. Maui first. does not have an active volcano. The active volcanoes are in uh, the Big Island. Oh, now see, I learned something today. Yeah. yeah. Um. So we didn't we didn't see any active volcanoes. Uh. But we did Almost. see. You also mentioned that you couldn't vouch for the other islands, but um, I feel like if you like the one, you're going to like the other ones. <laughs> well, it's 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 sort of a different vibe. We did some research beforehand to figure out which one we wanted to go to. Um, and like the one that everybody goes to is Oahu, uh, which has Honolulu, uh, which is the capital city of Hawaii. Um, and everything about Oahu and Honolulu in particular is like, this is where you go. If you want to do like shopping nightlife, like lots of like sort of activities. And we're like, nah, that's, that's not what we want. We wanted to go do outdoor stuff. That's why we're going to. So, um, sure. and, and for that, uh, Maui and maybe some of the smaller islands were, were better. There's a couple islands that you could only get to, uh, that were that you, it's, it's more rough. Uh, Lanai and um, what's the other one? Uh, possibly uh, Kauai um, are are more um, like off off the grid kind of, and we didn't choose either of those because we also wanted to be able to eat, and we weren't sure uh, if like what the accommodations would be like if you know for for getting food, for making food, for having food. Um, some of the some of those places are like. Basically, you go there and you you go to the resort, and the resort is awesome, but you never leave the resort. Um, so that was also not the thing that we wanted. Um, so we picked Maui because we knew that it was it's big enough that it's going to have access to stuff, and it's also got lots of cool naturey, outdoorsy things, uh, and it's still sort of Hawaii, so all the Hawaii experience. You can do snorkeling and all sorts of things like that. Uh, so, uh, but if we were going to go back, I mean, we 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 talking about like you know the big island and actually seeing the volcanoes and um and doing stuff and maybe actually you know going back and doing some island hopping um which you can do it's a lot cheaper than i thought like i didn't even look into that when we were when we were like looking at this uh but on our last day as we were like trying to figure out like what to do with like the 12 hours or so of time that we have to kill from between when we had the check out of our our place and when the, the, the plane leaves um i would just you know opened up you know, hopper on my phone and like, what would it cost to fly to the big Island today? And it was like 70 bucks or something. Um, so, and that was less that than the like snorkel tours that we were taking. Frequency so of flights and uh, the actual like commuter need for it. Keeps yeah, the I think so. Price low. Yeah. I mean, 70 bucks is nothing, but also and, and you're, not. you're, you're also like, I mean, you're probably in the air for like maybe 15 minutes. I mean, it's like the, you can, you can boat from, from Maui to the big Island. It would take, you know, maybe an hour and a half or something, but like, or maybe two hours, it wouldn't take very long. You could see the big Island from where we were. So if you're motivated, you could even swim there. Uh, if you were motivated, you could swim there. Yes. Are there sharks that would motivate me? <laughs> uh, there Race are sharks. Motivation. Yes. yes, there are sharks. Um, so yeah, we went we went snorkeling a couple days. Uh, we went to lots of beaches. Um, we uh, we went up the other side of the volcano and saw lots of waterfalls uh, and lots of really cool stuff. Yeah, it's yes. it's pretty. You got your dose of outdoor outdoorsiness. Yeah, yeah, and we managed to survive the the whole week without getting ridiculously sunburned. 
uh, mm. which I, oh, so I okay. cite as a success. Considering my last trip and first trip to Hawaii uh, with my parents, we all got really badly burned, but my dad got burned so bad that he was physically ill for like most of the rest of the trip. <laughs> because and it's terrible. Because either he didn't use sunscreen at all, or he used like suntan lotion. Um, and obviously that does not prevent sunburn. It just makes you darker. Uh, and, uh, yeah, he put he on was, at 10 a.m. and said, that's it for the day. He was, he was, he was literally like, he, he was red as a, like a, a, a lobster. Like it was, it was Station. bad. It was so, so bad. We, we, speaking of lobsters, yes. remember we, we were looking at the, the, the guy yes. that had a pet lobster. Yes. Has anybody checked on that recently? What's uh, I, that I saw that there is, I didn't watch the video, but I did see an update, uh, show up because I had watched it and I guess it was in my history. So it was in my recommendations to say that he, uh, somebody else was in possession of the lobster now. Like he, he, like somebody else like adopted kidnapped it. No, adopted oh, okay. Okay. The, the lobster from him. I'm like, this story is getting so much better. They kidnapped, like, sorry, <laughs> we need to end this call. I need to find out what's going on. I can't remember the, name, remember the lobster's name now. Darn it. Uh, yeah. I don't, I don't remember either. Um, it was such but, a great story though. Yeah. I shared that link far and wide. <laughs> To at least two other people. That's far and wide. Yeah. Yep. I made that mistake once of putting on suntan lotion instead of sunblock because I just saw the sun on the label. Yeah. It didn't occur to me that in the year it was like 2010 or something, it didn't occur to me that anybody would have suntan lotion anymore. Yeah. Yeah, they were really big. I, I, I think it's a, an island specific thing, but it might be an all of Hawaii thing that they're really big on uh, reef safe uh, sunscreen, like, and not mm. letting, well, letting, not asking that people not use uh, sunscreen that is not reef safe. What do you know what chemicals make it not reef safe? Uh, well, I know what chemicals make it reef safe, which is basically mineral stuff, uh, mineral based things like mm titanium dioxide and I don't remember. Um, but anything that's not those things uh, is not safe for, for reefs, but also anything that's not those things is not safe for humans. So, you know, that's a thing too. I was going to ask like, what, what, what are the things that, that are unsafe that are cool for humans, but not for reefs? reefs? Yeah. yeah. No, the things that are safe for reefs are the things that are also safe for humans and the things that are not safe for reefs are really not safe for humans either. We've been using, like safe for humans uh sunscreen for a while uh because you know we don't want we want to use sunscreen I love that. It's and like, we don't want to use carcinogens so you're hanging out in the sun do you want your cancer now or later right yeah got it um i, I had not even considered this so the stuff that we were using was already stuff that was being recommended and um but we did mm -hmm. see um some of the stuff like Hawaiian Tropic in particular was something that said they're like, yeah, don't use this. And I saw that uh, or like Banana Boat uh, was another thing. And I, I know that I saw a couple of those in, in some of the places. So they're obviously still selling that stuff, but you're not allowed to use it. Banana Boat. Have I talked about the terrible beer I had at the last NASCAR race I went to? I know that that's underselling how weird this, this presentation is <laughs> about to be. Presentation? Yes. We put my PowerPoint <laughs> like, slides. Apparently. We allowed a slideshow. Yeah. Yeah. I just, so back in uh november early november i think maybe it's october i don't know one of those months um, Time. we went to a local nascar race and uh a, a retired driver that is famous has like a beer brand and it was for sale and i'm like well i need to try this because i was working at the beer place at the time so i bought two cans one for me and one for my sister-in-law who so very into nascar and was there and uh it was like a uh a, a coconut IPA. Oh, that's what made um, you think of this. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I was like, I'm but not it tastes like banana boat sunscreen is, Ooh, what, is what made yuck. me think of it. Yeah. We yeah, opened no. it and I'm like, oh, this is awful. <laughs> this is like really bad. I don't know if I can drink this. It turns out the answer is yes, I could. <laughs> uh, but it was, it was like, it was, it was not very good. It's really bad beer. That's the beer story. The NASCAR beer story. So uh, another thing that I learned uh, in, in Maui, uh, I kept seeing this flag uh, 
uh, in on, outside of people's houses. And I was like, surely that's not the Hawaiian flag because there's a Union Jack in the corner. Well, it turns out that actually is the Hawaiian flag. There is a Union Jack in the corner. So then it was like, well, why is there a Union Jack in the corner of the Hawaiian flag? And it's because uh, the Hawaiian island, the kingdom of Hawaii, uh, particularly mm. under the rule of King Kamehameha, uh, had allied with uh, the uh, United Kingdom, uh, the, the Navy. The Navy. Uh, I don't remember specifics but like there so there is an alliance there and while hawaii the hawaiian islands was never a part of you know the the english empire uh the uh the the union jack in the flag was was used to represent that so that's that's a thing too and then there's uh th eight stripes Mm -hmm. uh, I was I was reading about this last night actually because I was interested in learning more about the flag. So there's eight stripes, uh, alternating uh, white, red, and blue, uh, to represent the eight islands of Hawaii. You, you heard the phrase "the sun never sets in the British Empire," or that it used to be true, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Was that actually true? Because like the Pacific is really freaking big. It is, but Australia. Is is got five time zones. Canada, Australia, various islands. <laughs> yeah, probably. I the other thing I, I learned I just, that was sort of a, of a similar note is I. So Hawaii, yeah. um, we went to a luau, and and at luaus frequently they show like not just hula dancing but other dancing from other sort of Polynesian islands, uh, and. And that's largely because Hawaii, I mean, it's, it's 3,000 miles from any other landmass, but being in the islands, like other island nations, countries, uh, like travel, there's, there's trade winds that go directly mm -hmm. to uh, Hawaii, and that's the reason why anybody is there at all. Um, and so there's lots of trade from other islands, so they, they, they sort of glommed all these different cultures uh, and that's why you see that sort of stuff represented. Um, so I remember from my first trip to Hawaii uh, and seeing all the different dances, I remember like the Tahitian dancers in particular, like uh, were like, that was sort of one of my favorite sort of performances. And I just assumed that Tahiti was an island in Hawaii because I knew there was a bunch of islands and I knew they were just sort of, I, I don't know what they're all called, but they're all there. Surely it's one of yeah. them. Uh, no, in fact, uh, <laughs> Tahiti is... <laughs> totally different place <laughs> it's uh a, a french <laughs> polynesian island so it's a french territory uh just out there uh in in out the pacific there. in the out pacific there, somewhere it's it's like very yeah. hand wavy <laughs> yeah well it's it is it's it's sort of just out there mm. Mm. Well, thank you for scouting out for our next Binary Jazz episode, which will take place in Hawaii. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not flying to Hawaii. Sorry, y'all. Never I'll, I'll not. I mean. Or just not now. Oh, just not now. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> I was just like, so. <laughs> I'm No, I'm never. It's on my, my no-fly list. <laughs> I was just like, I've never heard somebody so anti-flying to Hawaii. <laughs> no, I, I would go to Hawaii. Absolutely. Just not in the current state of the world yeah it wasn't it wasn't so bad it wasn't as bad as i, as I, I suppose it could have been i mean it, we could have gotten ah but it's a week later it's... we could we could guilt you into going if you can be guilted into going to florida yeah. you can be that's, guilted that's into fair going to yeah. <laughs> what a shithole that place has turned into huh dude gary <laughs> <laughs> i don't want to be the one to break this to you <laughs> <laughs> It's not, it hasn't turned into a shithole. <laughs> you have just been removed from it long enough. It's hard. Family's hard. That's, that's oh. my summary for this week. Family's hard. Mm. Doing things for family is hard. There, yeah. is, uh, there is a YouTube channel uh, that Erin found, uh, I think, largely from her Facebook feed uh, called man shorts uh m-a-n-n -N, shorts uh and they do uh these D, &D things um I'm sorry <clears throat> there's a before you go any further yeah there's a nascar sponsor called dude wipes 
and I am assuming, oh yes, yeah, yeah, no, laugh hard, always do. But I'm assuming it's the same parent company, right? Enjoy. <laughs> So, so man shorts, they, they do these D and D, uh, sh- skits basically where it's like, uh, Dungeons and Dragons, but X edition, right? Dungeons and Dragons, but, uh, Marvel edition, Dungeons and Dragons, but, uh, vampire edition, Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, so they have a whole series, a whole bunch of Florida editions. Like, I think they're from Florida. So there's like 10 or 12 Dungeons and Dragons Florida editions. And I, I highly, highly recommend uh, them. Many, many of which are taken from uh, actual, you know, things that happen in Florida. Uh, so, uh, so the last one, um, one of the players, uh, and it's, it's not like a real game. It's like a, it's like a 15 minute skit. Mm. It's but played like a game. Um, and so one of the last one that we watched uh, was there was somebody who, uh, well, everybody was drunk because getting drunk in Florida is a free action. Uh, and somebody was driving a, uh, a golf cart on the freeway with, uh, with cocaine, <laughs> with, with cocaine and, uh, and, uh, other, other substances and somebody yeah. else had broke into her neighbor's house, uh, to rob her, but then her neighbor or to maybe kill her. I don't remember, but her neighbor wasn't home. So instead she made a ham sandwich, uh, and, uh, in, in her neighbor's house, uh, and then stole a rental car, uh, and had meth on her when she went to, to court about, uh, <laughs> about said, uh, th- thievery. And, and so it's, uh, yeah, it's pretty good. A lot. Yeah. That's a lot. There's lots of alligator things that happen. I had an alligator experience yesterday watching Netflix. Well, I didn't have an alligator experience, but I had an alligator oh. thought yesterday. We were watching an alligator a show thought. called Afterlife uh, on Netflix. Uh, Ricky Gervais. Um, produced it, I guess. Lead actor in it. It's uh, a lot of content warning, but it's it's a pretty good show. Um, like bits of broad spectrum. Like every episode starts with like a half paragraph, <laughs> and it's probably not inclusive. Uh, but there was a scene where um, uh, there's an actor uh, swimming, and I'm like like a little lake and i'm like oh my god why i would never swim in there and then it occurred to me like oh wait this is this is in england there's probably not alligators in that lake <laughs> in fact i could swim in that lake here in north carolina and probably be fine there's probably not alligators in the yeah lake and yep so i've just become accustomed to the idea that any body of water was is likely going to kill me either alligators yeah or no, there are there are definitely lakes that do not contain alligators <laughs> or that's anything not- that's going to kill you that's how I am with earthquake stuff where like mm. someone will have like, like a row of glass bottles up on a shelf and I'm like, Oh yeah. <laughs> that's a real danger zone. Like, what are you doing? And then I'm like, we're not on a fault line. Well, we're on fault line now, but like where we were. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. That's, yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. Hurricane. Cool. Earthquake. No, can't abide. I <laughs> can't abide. Can't do it. Do it. I we we apparently there's a, a small fault line, a hundred miles north of us here. Uh, I, I guess like you know, the mountains. And there's are, fault lines everywhere. Yeah. 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 Well, mm-hmm. there was there's been since we've been here. There's been uh, uh, two earthquakes up there. One was almost significant enough that we theoretically should have felt it here, but I'm like, I just yeah. assume the kids are running through the house. I mean, anywhere anywhere that there are mountains, there's a reason why those mountains exist, and it's usually. Uh, Plate tectonics. Plate mm. tectonics. To the west of us are the uh, Smoky Mountains. To the east of us is the old Uari mountain chain, which is uh, was previously as tall as the Rockies and has eroded down now that oh. it's like basically hills. One so, might call you dangerously close to Dollywood. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, speaking of, I did Jolene again on uh, Friday of last week <laughs> for the uh, residents of the... Uh, facility my mother-in-law resides at uh, yeah and then that night i push her out to bed and she asked me to sing that to her for bedtime <laughs> so pretty oh, lullaby no big deal <laughs> lullaby can oh, yeah. be any song that you sing at bedtime <laughs> that's in this house that is very true yeah 
As long as you go to bed, that's the only. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, my answer, of course, go the fuck yeah. to sleep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my kids are such good sleepers. It's, it's such a rare thing that they they fight sleep or have trouble sleeping. Like that's nice. So it is. It's good. Yeah. Good. Yeah, as an, adult, our, our kids, as an adult who's a horrible sleeper, I'm like, man, that must be nice. <laughs> our kids, yeah. our kids needed a little bit more help than that for a long time, and still kind of do. Tyler is like that. He's he needs a routine. Like, yeah, I have to, I have to uh, take my allergy medicine and a melatonin now, and then I need to brush my teeth, and then I, he's like had a noisemaker and mm-hmm. does a meditation before bed, you know, and and then it's like. Both mom and dad have to poke our head in and say goodnight. Like it's like mm-hmm. it's a big routine. Whereas like Katie, I feel like be like, all right, go to bed. She'd be like, all right, peace out. And she'd be done. <laughs> <laughs> That's Katie. I mean, Katie's just like Katie. Katie doesn't need um, like the big. You know. I'm I'm in the like I have a big ritual. Yeah, I'm in that I'm in that ritual. category of like yeah. things that I do before bed. And it mm. still doesn't really work, but I'm like, well, at least I'm trying with these things. <laughs> I mean, I guess there's two parts that in the echo chamber of Twitter, somebody recently has pulled out the uh, research study from a few years back that like, even if you don't sleep, like laying down for a long period of time, it has the same restorative effects on the body. Mm. So um, great. Like that's number one, but number two, like I think, and those rituals, like even if, even if sleep is not coming because I'm, I'm there sometimes uh, it i think it's still helpful just to have that like that thing to indicate the end of the day and yeah. if your brain's like yeah but actually no <laughs> okay. i'm sorry we're not doing that tonight <laughs> i've been like i've been like waking at like 5 15 the last three days I'm like well crap not on purpose, so, just so specific. Yeah, I was gonna say we I, we, I know. we had to I wake know. up at, at five fifteen on purpose to go to go out snorkeling because all the best snorkeling tours like left at like you know six o'clock in the morning. That's interesting. Yeah. It doesn't strike me as something that you really need to get up and out for. <laughs> well, I think part of it is is um I, I think a lot of it is is weather. Um, because we did notice that the wind seemed to pick up in the afternoon. Uh, we did try to, to book, we did book a, an afternoon snorkeling tour and that got canceled because the winter is, the weather is too choppy. Um, so I think that's part of it. I think also it's, it's, um, just, I don't know, more, con- more convenient for sailors. And that's maybe tide related to as well. Like you don't want to, you don't want to lose anybody that you take out their snorkeling. They blow yeah. away. It, it, it's bad for the Yelp reviews. Yeah. Yeah. It definitely is. Went snorkeling with my partner. Only one of us came back. Mm-hmm. One star. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, and Stitcher. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at, at @binaryjazz. Special thanks to Serpiente Negra Ensemble for the use of their tracks for our intro and outro music. You can find them online at serpientenegra.bandcamp.com. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz. <laughs>